Hi, camera. Yesterday, I promised you a review of Divergent, and that's what I'm going to do today. This isn't going to be edited because it's late at night and I'm tired. But basically, I wrote a few notes. Uh, if you have not read the book, this is going to be a very, very spoilery review. If you haven't read the book, all you need to know is that for someone who hasn't read the book, it is a very good movie. It is very well made, the costumes are amazing, the acting is quite believable, and it's good. But if you have read the book, there are some, like, little things that I need to nitpick because I'm me that, uh, if you haven't read the book, obviously don't know, don't watch this bit, because it'll... Yeah. If you have read the book, feel free to watch this. It's, uh, if you don't want to know any of this, again, just because you think it'll ruin it for you as an adaptation, again, don't watch it. But if you, uh, don't mind any of that, I'm going to go on and read some of these, okay? Okay. Uh, the first thing is that I knew that Shailene Woodley was going to be in this movie, and I was, like, prepared for that because I knew I was going to geek out when I saw her. I forgot, however, that Ansel was also in this movie. He plays Caleb, for any of you who don't know. And it startled me when I saw him because I was like, whoa, he's here! And he has that same, that same shit-eating grin. Ah. So that startled me. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you were left to figure out on your own in the book was explained to you very directly at the beginning of the movie, which made a lot of sense because it would have been like three hours longer than it was otherwise. So it made sense, but it kind of like bugged me. Uh, they left out the bus scene altogether. That scene in the beginning with the bus, uh, they just left it out. And also uh, the part of the simulation where she was on the bus with Caleb and all that, where the man was like yelling at her, uh, that was left out entirely. Uh, I don't know why, it just was. It didn't really show the family dynamic the same way it did in the mo uh, book, because she, like, asks them questions, and Caleb never corrects her in the movie. Whereas in the book, uh, every time she asked a question, it was kind of rude, because that's not how it was done in Abnegation. And so that was just a little thing. And on the other hand, it didn't put enough emphasis on Caleb's line about thinking about himself. It didn't point out how dramatically out of character that Triss thought this was of him. And so it just didn't show that. In the book, The Choosing Ceremony, I, I could be wrong about this, but e the bowls. The bowls each had, like, one of the objects in it, one burning coal, one piece of glass. Uh, yeah. But in the uh, movie, it's called a movie, there's, like, multiple of each. It's, like, a bowl full of glass, a bowl full, full of burning coals, a bowl full of rocks instead of just a plain grey st gray stone. And I think that's different from the book. I could be wrong, though. Uh, they left out the boy missing the bus and becoming factionless at the beginning of initiation, and they also left out the girl falling to her death. Uh, the actor who plays Four, he did a very good job, because if you don't know, he has an accent. He's not American. And he did a pretty good job of covering it, but occasionally in an attempt to cover his accent, he his voice would drop kind of unnaturally deep. So he would just be talking, it would be like, Welcome to Dauntless. And his voice would go deeper suddenly. And I get why he did it, he was covering his accent, and it made sense. And unless you were paying a lot of attention, you wouldn't notice, but I pay a lot of attention to anything, so I didn't notice. Uh, what else? Oh, in the book, there was like the pit with the river running through it, but in the movie, there was just a gorge, like, uh canyon almost underground and i don't know why they made that replacement i guess because they didn't want to have to have that whole thing with for explaining how it was the thin line between bravery and stupidity and all that and i get why that made sense if you haven't read the book it doesn't matter and you won't notice but if you have which if you're watching this far you probably have it it might bug you i don't know uh sorry i have a lot of notes and i have bad handwriting uh, it left out Triss's interaction with the boy from Amity. Uh, if you remember in the book, they go to a field trip in the, to the, um, whatchamacallit, fence, and she meets a guy from Abnegation who had transferred to Amity, and they have a conversation, and that bit was entirely left out, which I was actually kind of disappointed about, because I really wanted to see that scene, because it was one of my favorite scenes in the book. But they left it out, and I can understand why it wasn't really that plot-oriented, it just helped explain the characters a little better in my mind. So it made sense, it just, like, annoyed me a little bit. Uh, uh, it left out the bit where Christina and Triss fight over the flag in Capture the Flag, or the glory and stuff. And I guess since they just didn't have enough time to emphasis, to put emphasis on that small detail, because 
it was too busy trying to build them up as friends and that would have been a step backwards which in the book made sense but didn't make sense for a uh, two and a half hour movie so i understand why they left it out but i was a little annoyed about that um it left out triss's relationship with the dauntless born initiates where she's like hanging out with them some because she's going higher in her ranks and like she goes ziplining with them and that was left well she still went ziplining but it wasn't explained that she was like their friend too it kind of left them out as a group which i guess makes sense for the narrative of the movie but all this stuff does it's just annoying me uh they replaced the visitation that the mother had uh in the book where she was able to come and visit and all the parents of the dauntless initiates were able to come and visit that was left out and instead it was this weird inco incognito meeting which i guess was supposed to make it look like more mysterious because it's like more of a strange society uh, in general, it kind of just left out that they were happy. It it doesn't put enough emphasis on the fact that most of the people living within the faction system are happy people, living happy lives, and it made it seem like they were this weird, repressed people. Which they were, but like most of them didn't view it that way in the book, versus in the movie. It, that, that whole replacement of the visitation with the weird meeting incognito thing, just, it weirded me out a little. And after the ziplining scene, it left out Triss being caught by the uh, crowd, which I thought was really cool and symbolic, so I liked it, and I was a little disappointed they left it out. It's not a big thing. Uh, second page. In the movie, the train stops at multiple points when they're boarding it. If you remember, in the book, the only time it actually stops is at, like, the very end when they get on, and they have to, like, because they're in the simulation being controlled so it makes sense that they're not going to jump onto a moving train then but in the movie the train stopped multiple times for them to board on in a relaxed fashion and i didn't like it it bugs me because the whole thing about dauntless is the train doesn't stop and they get on anyway because they're dauntless and i liked that and it wasn't there but i understand why they left it out because having a bunch of really dramatic jumping onto moving train sequences doesn't make a lot of sense in a two and a half hour movie either um uh when they're going through the simulations in uh four's uh fear landscape in the book it was him showing her his fears but in the movie it was also him like training her to go through the dauntless way which i don't think was a thing in the book i could be misremembering that but um that bugged me a little because he was telling her to go through the dauntless way to not be caught which makes a lot of sense but she kind of just figured that out on her own in the book and in the movie it was him like explaining it to her explicitly and like the way the reason ah uh, what's the way to phrase this the way that they showed the scenes of four spheres were different in the movie than they were in the book like instead of just being floating over chicago they were like on a bridge over chicago and it was kind of weird and i didn't quite like it but it made sense plot wise a lot of these problems were just to move the plot along because they don't have 400 pages of a novel to do it they have two and a half hours of a movie and a page is a minute so yeah um everyone seems to know in the book in the movie what divergents are where in the book it's like this thing that not many people know about unless they are like the leaders or they're the di or they're divergent or know or know a divergent themselves versus you hear like people in the movie talking about it like oh i hear they're hunting divergents those are real it does do a good job of implying that people don't think divergents exist but it also shows that they like know about them which isn't something you got in the book i think it might have actually been a cool extra and that could be cool but it's just different from the book so i thought i'd let you know about it um oh it leaves out the funeral scene for the guy who committed suicide i'm drawing a blank on his name it leaves out the funeral scene where they're calling him brave and stuff it leaves that out entirely which i guess makes sense because funeral scenes in action movies unless someone gets shot aren't very interesting but I like that scene too. That scene was interesting and important to me, and they left it out, and I understand why, but it's just a little annoying. Um, it leaves out all the recovery time. Like, in the book, Triss had time at the end of every night, and for like a couple of days between strenuous activities, to like recover and just go back to normal training. Whereas in the movie, it kind of just hit all the major plot points one after the other 
it was like knife scene, paintball. It wasn't paintball, by the way. It was like these nerve stim things, and then but it just went straight from one to the other, and it went straight to zip lining after paintball. And I get why it did that, but it makes it seem like it was this like even more strenuous thing than it was, and that bugged me a little. But it made sense because again, they only had an hour and two and a half hours, so I know why they did it, but it just gave it a different feel than it had in the book, and the feel's the part I really hope they capture. Uh, they didn't put enough emphasis on the way that Triss really betrayed her father. Like, the mother, we get that she still loves him, and she even said at one point during the movie, I love you no matter what, which is very different from the book, but in the movie, it doesn't show how, like, hurt and angry her father was. Because I guess that was all, like, subtext that Triss was reading on his face, which I guess makes sense that it wouldn't be shown in the movie, or something like that. I know why they did it, I know why they did all of these, I've been saying that a lot, but it's just one of those things that bugs you, I guess, in a movie. Um, in the book, the kissing and between Four and Triss was, like, built up to the whole movie, and we all book the whole book and we all saw it coming and it was like this big yes finally moment in the movie they're just talking and then boom kissing out of absolutely nowhere uh it bugged me because it was like you could feel the tension in the book versus in the movie it felt almost unnatural the way it happened it was just like they were having a normal conversation Triss had just been attacked and he was just talking to her and then also, they were, they were, like, above ground, like, overlooking the city. And I think in the book they were underground in Four's room, so that was kind of weird. And, yeah. Uh, in the final test, uh, one of the, one of, uh, Triss's scenes in her final test is, in the book, it's just that Four is trying to have sex with her, and she's not comfortable with that because she was raised in a pretty modest environment. And so she says no, and that is it. That is how she dealt with it. But in the uh, movie, it was for, like, trying to have sex with her. She says no, and then he, like, tries to force himself upon her, and she has to force him off and, like, fight him off in, a, I guess, a dauntless way. But it felt more powerful in the book, the way that she was just saying no. And, like... And then afterwards, people were applauding her, and I was like, wow, this is amazing, but then it turned out to just be another scene in her simulation, which I didn't like. If they had just applauded her and that was real, that would have been cool. That would have been, like, a cool, empowering moment, but because it was just another simulation, it kind of didn't have that feel to it that it would have otherwise. Um, the ending of the book slash movie, the movie is completely different in ending from the book. The result is basically the same, and everyone's saved, and the running away, and whatever. But the way that it got there was different. There was, like, this fight scene between Janine and Triss that just didn't happen in the book that they added for some reason, because it was more dramatic, it was much more theatrical, and I understand why they did it. The scene and the lighting of that scene and all the costumes and everything were beautiful, but it was just not in the book. And I get why they added it, but... bugged me. Uh... Oh. It did a kind of poor job, in my mind, of explaining that Triss's mom is also a Divergent. In the book, it was like this thing, like, oh, you're Divergent too, you left Dauntless. In the book, you, in the movie, you don't really get that. It's just like, oh, you left Dauntless for abnegation, but it doesn't really show her as Divergent the same way. She keeps saying, your mind doesn't work the same way, not our mind doesn't work the same way. Which is weird because it was like this cool daughter-mother bonding moment in the book that just didn't happen in the movie. Again, it would have been a lot of dialogue that they probably just wanted to cut out because time. And that made sense because if the movie had been how I wanted it to be and exactly like the book, it would have been like five hours long and we would have had to have an intermission in the middle like a 1940s movie. And this isn't Cleopatra, so that just wouldn't work. Um, what else is there? The mirror scene in the very beginning of the, uh, book slash movie, in the, uh, mo book, it's, she is getting her hair cut by her mother, and she's sneaking looks at herself. In the, uh, movie, however, it's her mother cuts her hair, and then opens up the sliding panel, and lets her see for a few seconds before closing it again. So that was kind of different, 
and I don't know why they did it that way, because I think it made more sense the way it was in the book, but it looked cool, so, and, mm, I don't know. And all of the, th and that moves on to my next one, actually. All of her mother's quiet strength that was emphasized so strongly in the book wasn't really in the movie. Like, in the, uh, movie, there's a lot of silence involved, and it's heavy silence. I mean, in the book, there's a lot of heavy silence involved. I can't tell the difference, apparently, anymore, because I'm tired. And, like, in the mirror scene is a good example. In the book, she was cutting her hair, and she was just being quiet and very stoic about it, and then she slides the panel wordlessly. Versus in the, uh, movie, she opens it up and lets Tris see herself, which is something Abnegation would never do, and then she closes it, closes it again and says, that's all you get. And it worked better with the silence, in my mind. It made it stronger, the strength and, like, stoicity of her mother. Is stoicity a word? It is now. And so, uh, yeah. Where am I? Where am I? Oh, when Triss visited Caleb in, um, whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit, Erudite, First of all, they said erudite, they pronounced it weird. It was erudite, like the whole b movie, and I don't know why it was pronounced that way. They pronounced candor the way I do, but they pronounced it erudite. Is that the correct way to spell it or pronounce it? It probably is, but I just didn't know that. Anyway, when she is visiting Caleb, it was quite different. She didn't go to a woman at a desk. She just kind of sneaked onto the elevator, snuck onto the elevator, excuse my bad grammar, and, like, walks up to him, and he, he, like, takes her away, and they, like, have this hidden conversation, and he, like, is a complete bitch to her, which wasn't the same way it was. In the uh, book, it was just like, why are you here? What are you doing? We're gonna get in trouble, which was very like Caleb, but in the movie, it was just like, why are you here? I don't love you anymore, and I hated it, and it, uh, it made Caleb look like such a jerk. And he wasn't that much of a jerk in the book. He was selfless, but he also had self-knowledge, and he still cared about Triss in a way that it doesn't really show in the movie, and that bugged me. And finally, the last thing. Uh, the way Janine twisted Triss's and Caleb's words in the article was not shown in the movie. There was none of that, like, weird dialogue. The articles in general, it was mentioned once in, like, passing, in, like, this when some dick was being a dick to her. And that was it, and that was all they mentioned about the articles. And the articles were, like, a big thing in the book. They were, like, what was causing a large part of the unrest, a way to fuel the unrest, and you didn't really get that. It was kind of just, like, no one saw it coming, what Erudite did. And I guess they didn't see it coming, but it was, like, even the audience didn't see it coming in the movie versus in the book. We kind of knew Erudite was going to do something. It was in character for them versus in the movie, it was just out of nowhere, and it was this thing crazy Janine was doing. I mean, Janine is crazy, but you know what I mean. Uh, all in all, though, I think it was a very, very good movie. It was not the best adaptation. It was a decent adaptation. It did a pretty good job of getting across the major messages of the book. I know I just did, like, a ten-minute video, or however long I've been recording, like, tearing it down, but that was just every criticism I had off the top of my head. I just, like, just jotted that down. But I thought it was an actually really good movie. It was a very, very good action movie. It made sense narratively if you haven't read the book, but I went into it, as I always do with movies based off of books, expecting it to be like the book. I basically set myself up for disappointment, but I do it every time, and then I get confused and a little angry when it's not like it is in the book. But if you haven't read the book, and actually if you have, I really recommend you see this movie. It was very good. I cannot wait to see Insurgent, and I haven't even read Insurgent yet, although from what I've been told, I may be better off not. But I would really like to know what you have to say about this movie and this book, because it's a fantastic book and it's a fantastic movie, just maybe not the best adaptation. And I like hearing your opinions, viewers, so comment them. Uh, that is all. Thank you. I will talk to you tomorrow with something probably not shorter, but probably less crazy sounding and frantic-ish. So, goodbye.